الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone Here is Dr. Amani Abdelfattah Lecturer of Histology and Cell Biology And today inshallah we will discuss together the connective tissue Regarding the objectives of our lecture It will be to enumerate types of connective tissue To identify components of connective tissue proper Which is one of the types of this connect Or one of these types including the fibers, cells, and their histological structure to recognize the properties and location of various types of connective tissue. These are the objectives of our lecture that after we finish the lecture, all of you, inshallah, should know. Uh, as you know from previous epithelium lecture, that human body or any living tissue, any living body or organs, mostly formed of four basic tissues. So, the body is formed of mainly four basic tissues. These four basic tissues include the epithelium, which is the first one, connective tissue, the muscle, and the nervous tissue. These four basic tissues together, when they are mixed, they form the body or the living body. You, you studied the epithelium before, so our topic today will be the connective tissue. So, Connective tissue, as regarding its definition, it is vascular tissue formed of few widely separated cells with abundant matrix. This definition includes some of the characters of this tissue. So number one, it is vascular. And this is a, an important character for connective tissue differentiating it from epithelium. Epithelium as a tissue, it is a vascular, means it contains no blood vessels. A, the, the regarding the connective tissue, it is vascular, means it contains numerous blood vessels. It's formed of few widely separated cells. This is also one of the differences between connective and epithelium, as the epithelium is formed of numerous closely packed or closely aggregated cells. Uh, while here in the connective tissue, we can see that example. Here is a part of the skin. This is our skin. Here is the epithelium, the superficial layer. And this is the connective tissue underlying it. Here you can see that the epithelium is formed of numerous cells closely aggregated to each other. While here is the connective tissue, the cells are widely separated. These are the nuclei of connective tissue cells. They are few, they are widely separated. Uh, regarding its function and size, uh, the connective from its name, it is connective, so it connects. It connects and supports various tissues and organs. So this is regarding the general characters of connective tissue. It is vascular, contain numerous blood vessels, formed of few widely separated cells. It has abundant matrix. It's a substance filling the spaces between cells and fibers. Regarding its function, it connects and supports various organs and tissues. This connective tissue is subdivided into many types. These include connective tissue proper, the cartilage, the bone, the blood. All these four tissues are included under the title connective tissue. But in this lecture, we will strictly uh, discussing together the first type only, which is connective tissue proper. So our lecture today will uh, focus on the connective tissue proper as one of the types of connective tissue. Later on, we will study the cartilage, the bone, and the blood in uh, subsequent lectures, inshallah. Regarding connective tissue proper, we will mention two uh, big titles. We will mention the components, and these are the, the parts or the materials from which the connective tissue proper is formed. And then we will mention the types, types of connective tissue proper and its classification. So here we have two uh, big titles. The first one will be the components of connective tissue. Regarding the components, we have three components. When they are mixed together, the, the connective tissue proper is formed. These components include what we call the fibers, some cells, and matrix. So fibers, cells, and matrix together form connective tissue proper. Regarding each component, we have subclasses or we have subtypes. Regarding the fibers, we have three types of fibers. We have collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. All these are connective tissue fibers. 
regarding the cells, we will classify the cells into two groups. The first group, we call it fixed group. And the second group, we call it free or wandering group. So these are two groups under the title connective tissue proper cells. Regarding the matrix, as I mentioned before, it is the substance filling the, the gaps or the spaces between cells and fibers. And here in the connective tissue proper, the matrix is characterized by being soft. So the consistency of the matrix in connective tissue proper, it is soft matrix. These are the, the components of the, mat the connective tissue proper as a whole. Then we will take component by component and discuss it in some details. Let's start by the connective tissue fibers. As I mentioned now, we have three types of fibers. We have white collagenous fiber or collagen fibers. We have yellow elastic fibers. And lastly, we have reticular fibers. In this table, we summarize together the differences between the three types regarding their name, why they are called like that, their characters, character of each type, their appearance by the microscope, by the light microscope, and lastly, the staining properties of each type. Let's start by the name. So, what? White collagen fibers, why they are called white, why they are described by the word white, because collagen fibers in fresh state without any staining, without any manipulation, these fibers appear white in fresh state. So they are called white collagen. Regarding the word collagen, this describes the protein from which these fibers are formed. So white collagen fibers are fibers which are white in fresh state and they are formed of collagen protein. Regarding the second yellow elastic fibers, yellow is the same, it is the color in fresh state, and elastic is the, the property of these fibers that they have the elasticity property, they are stretched or they can be stretched, and after release of this stretch, they recoil again, regaining its original length, this is what we call elasticity, so they are called yellow elastic due to that clause. The last type, which is the reticular fibers, the word reticular is from reticulum, and reticulum means network. So these fibers are characterized by forming a network or reticulum, so-called reticular. This is the cause of the naming of each type. Second point is the characters. And here, regarding the white collagen, the collagen fibers are characterized by being strong fibers, and they are resistant to stretch, so they are not elastic. They are resistant to stretch on, in reverse to the, the character of elastic type. So again, in the collagen type, the fibers are strong and they are resisting stretch. Regarding elastic fibers, which is the second type, as I mentioned now, they are elastic due to the elasticity property. They can be stretched and after release of this stretch, they recoil again they uh, goes to the original lens again after release of this stretch. This is regarding characters of yellow elastic fibers. In the reticular, as also I mentioned now in the naming, they form a reticulum. They are branching and anastomosing, branching and anastomosing several times. So they form a reticulum at the end. So this is the character of reticular fibers. Uh, under the light microscope, when I examine a section containing collagen fibers, they appear as wavy, thick, and non branching fibers. So the appearance of collagen fibers by light microscope, the fiber appear wavy. It is thick compared with the other types, so it is thicker than elastic and reticular. And the fiber itself is not branching, so the fiber is passing singly along its course. In addition, the collagen fibers can form bundles. So when a group of fibers group together, they form what we call a bundle. So the bundles also appear wavy when they are formed of group of fibers aggregated together. So this is regarding the collagen by light microscope. Regarding the elastic fibers, they appear straight, not wavy like the collagen. They are thin compared to the thickness of collagen also. They are branched fibers, so elastic fiber appears straight fiber, thin, 
and the branches and they form fenestrated membranes. They are grouped together to form fenestrated membrane, but it is very thin and not forming a bundle like the collagen fiber. Regarding the reticular, these fibers are very thin. So here we can uh, arrange the thickness from thick, thin to very thin. They are branching and anastomosing to form a, a network or reticulum, as I mentioned before. This is the appearance of reticular fibers under the light microscope. They are very thin fibers, branching and anastomosing again, branch and anastomosing again. So at the end, it forms a reticulum or a network of fibers. The last point in the comparison is the staining. When I want to see these fibers, what are the stains that we can use to stain them? Staining is simply to use a dye to differentiate the components of the tissue under the light microscope. We have various types of stains, but H and E is the routine histological stain. We use H and E abbreviation for hematoxylin and UC for staining of any tissue to see its general characters. And we have other types of stains, what we call special stains. This is special from their name. Special means that they are characterizing specific component or a specific part of a tissue. So for example, when we want to stain collagen fibers, I want to see collagen in a section, in a slide under the microscope. So when I stain it with H and E, hematoxylin and eucine, hematoxylin and eucine is mixing or is, um, is the use of two stains together. H, hematoxylin is blue colored stain and E is red colored stain or pink color. When we use hematoxin and eucine to stain collagen, the collagen takes the eucine color or the red color or pink, and we use the word acidophilic to describe it. So acidophilic is a description of the red areas of the section stained with H and G. Here in the elastic type, it's also stained acidophilic with H and E. So both collagen and elastic are acidophilic by H and E. So by the color, they couldn't be differentiated by H and E. Both are red or pink colors. Regarding reticular fibers, they are not stained at all. So they are not stained with H and E. If I want to differentiate, I want to, to use a special stain that stain only this. Collagen, for example, or stain the collagen with a specific color. So if I see the color, I'm sure at that time that these are collagen fibers. Examples of special stains for collagen, what we call Mallory trichrome and then Jason stain. Both are special stains for collagen. Regarding the Mallory, Mallory stain the collagen blue. So in the section stained with Mallory trichrome, I find the collagen fiber blue color. By Van Gieson, Van Gieson is stain collagen, red color. So here you will find that the collagen in the section are appearing red. Regarding elastic fibers, the special stains for elastic fibers are Verhoeve and Van Gieson also. So here Van Gieson is uh, present in collagen and elastic. So why we call it specific? Because it, it gives two different colors, not like H and E. Here, Van Gieson stain collagen red, while in the elastic, it stains yellow. So because it gives two different colors, we can consider it also a special stain because it could be used to differentiate collagen from elastic fibers. Regarding the other special stain, the Verhoeve, Verhoeve stain elastic fibers the black. So in the section, contain elastic fiber and stain with very high, these fibers appear black colors. Lastly, the reticular fibers. The reticular fibers also has two special stains, silver stain, stained black, and pus stain or PAS, abbreviation for periodic acid chef. This abbreviation or this stain, PAS, stain the reticular fibers magenta color. So in this point, we first mention H and E staining and the color, if it's the fiber is stained or not, what is the color is, uh, which is appearing with. And we mentioned two special stains for each type to differentiate it from other, uh, other type of fibers. 
this is summarization for the difference between the three types of elastic, the three types, sorry, of connective tissue fibers, collagen, elastic, and lytic. Here are some photos for the fibers stained with different colors. So here is the appearance of white collagen by H and E. It's pink colored, acidophilic, wavy bundles. Here is the bundle because it is thick, formed of numerous fibers together. Here they are wavy and they are pink colored or acidophilic by H and E. Here are the same fiber, collagen also, but it is stained with mallory. So here we can see that the collagen here or blue colored, blue colored fibers, or the collagen stained with mallory trichrome. Regarding the elastic, here are the fibers, elastic fibers. They are thin fibers, mostly straight, and they are branching. They are acidophilic, red or pink colored by H and E. And here are the same fibers, but stained the black with very high stain, yes. This is a special stain of elastic fiber stained black. These are the elastic fibers. Black is stained with verhoeve stain. Let's see the reticular fibers. Here is the reticular stained with silver. The black thin fibers, which form a network, represent the reticular fibers stained with silver stain. These are the reticular fibers, thin, and they are branching and anastomosing appearing like a network or reticulum stained with silver so they appear black. These are some examples for the uh, types of fibers and the, the stains used to differentiate them. Second the component of connective tissue proper is connective tissue cells. And as we mentioned now, there are two groups. We have fixed group and the free group. In each group, we have some cells. Regarding the fixed group, we have three types of cells, what we call undifferentiated mesenchymal cell, fibroplast, and adipose cell. These three cells together are grouped in the fixed group. Regarding the free group, we have also three cells. We have mast cell, plasma cell, and macrophage. These three cells are free group. Let's start by the first one, first group, fixed connective tissue cells. As I mentioned, they include UMC, abbreviation for undifferentiated mesenchymal cell, fibroplast cell, adipose cell, and these are the main cells in the group. In addition, we can add two types, but we will not mention them in detail. Reticular cell, which is the cell responsible for production of reticular fibers, and fixed macrophage. It is one of the macrophages we will mention in the free, but some of them are fixed and not mobile. They are present always in the connective tissue, so they are called fixed macrophage. These are two types included in the group, but I'll not, I'll not mention them in details later. So you will mention in details characters of undifferentiated mesenchymal cell, fibroplast, and adipose cell. Here is the first one, undifferentiated mesenchymal cell. Let's check a point, or I want to mention a point before we start mentioning the, the characters of each cell. So discuss any cell, any cell at, in general, in the histology at all, or here in the connective tissue cells I will mention now. We need to cover mainly four points. These four points include, number one, we can summarize a definition for the cell, maybe written or not, depending on the cell itself. But we need to mention the shape of the cell, the Staining of cytoplasm, its cytoplasm is acetophilic or pesophilic, and why? The shape of the nucleus and its site, where the nucleus is present and its shape, if it has characteristic shape. And the fourth point include a very brief hint about the function. So to discuss any cell in general, you have four points need to be covered. The first one is the shape of the cell, the nucleus, site, and shape cytoplasm, staining property, and finally, the function in a very short hint. Let's start by this one, UMC or undifferentiated mesenchymal cell. This cell is branched cell. This is a shape. This cell has body, cell body, and the processes projecting from the body 
making it a branch itself. It has many processes. Nucleus is large and oval in shape and central in position. So here the nucleus characters, it is large nucleus and oval in shape. Regarding cytoplasm, the cell has basophilic cytoplasm. Basophilic means it's, it's the same with H hematoxin and mostly all cells having basophilic cytoplasm. This denotes that the cell contain numerous ribosomes or rough endoplasmic reticulum or both. So if you find the cell characterized by having basophilic cytoplasm, this is simply is due to the presence of numerous ribosomes or of endoplasmic reticulum or post. This depends on the function of the cell. So this is simply the three characters I mentioned now. Branched cell, oval, central, large nucleus, basophilic cytoplasm. What about the function of this cell? It is considered mother cell of all types of connective tissue cells. So in the, the undifferentiated cell, can differentiate to give various types of connective tissue cell. It gives fat cell, adipocyte, can give chondrocyte, the, the cartilage cell, osteoplast, the bone cell, it can give muscle, it can give neurons. All cells of connective tissue in different types could be derived from undifferentiated mesenchy mesenchymal cell. So we consider it mother. It is the mother for all connective tissue cells. This is the first cell. And these are the four points I mentioned now. Second cell here is the fibroplast. Fibroplast, we have additional points here, which is, we can consider the definition, but a fibroplast is actually the most common connective tissue cell. So it is the most numerous. It is the most numerous cell present in connective tissue. Regarding the characters, number one, the shape of cell, it is branched, spindle shape. So here's the body, it's a spindle shape. And also we have many processes projecting from this cell body. So it is branched, spindle cell. This is the shape of the cell. Regarding the nucleus, nucleus is oval, vesicular, and eccentric nucleus. Eccentric means it's slightly shifted from the center. It's not central, it is shifted from the center. So it's described by the word eccentric. It is oval particular and eccentric nucleus. Regarding the cytoplasm, here is again the cytoplasm is basophilic. Why basophilic? Be due to presence of rich, numerous ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and these are the causes of basophilia. In addition, we have also prominent Golgi, and all these organelles, when they are grouped in a cell, mostly this denotes that this cell is secretory. Secretory, it has a product that it's inside and then secreted outside. What we call protein synthesizing cell. So it is a cell responsible for production of certain protein in the tissue it's present in. So fibroplast is a protein synthesizing cell. It contains all the machinery needed for protein production. It contains ribosomes, contains rough endoplasmic reticulum, contains Golgi, all these organelles are needed for protein production. So we can describe it as protein synthesizing cell. Regarding the function, this cell is responsible for production of connective tissue fibers and the matrix. So here is the protein. The protein of the fibers is synthesized by fibroplast. The components of the matrix are synthesized by fibroplast. So this, this is the function of fibroplast. And this also can explain why it is the most numerous, because it is the cell responsible for production of the other components of connective tissue proper. It synthesizes the fibers, all the fibers, mainly the collagen and the elastic, mainly, and synthesizes the matrix with its all components. This is regarding the fibroplast cell. Third cell in the fixed group is adipose cell. This cell is oval in shape, and this oval cell contain fat in its cytoplasm. This fat is formed of large fat globule. So the, the fat here is large amount and it fill most of the cytoplasm in the form as you see here, large globule, bowl of fat filling the cytoplasm. 
to the extent that it pushes the nucleus to one side. So there is no space for the nucleus to be present in. It is pushed, pushed, pushed to the periphery of the cell. So here the cytoplasm is filled with large ball of fat, large globule of fat, pushing the nucleus to a side. So the cell, the nucleus here is peripheral. It's peripheral in position. Or maybe eccentric, it's okay. It is not central, it is shifted, shifted to a side of a cell. So here the nucleus is flattened, compressed, flattened, and eccentric or pushed to a side due to the presence of the fat filling the cytoplasm. Here is a diagram for the fat cell, this yellow ball representing the fat globule. And here is the nucleus, it is shifted to a side, it's eccentric, and it is pushed and compressed by the fat, so it's flattened nucleus. Regarding the cytoblast, when we stain the cell or the tissue, adipose tissue containing numerous fat cells with H and E, H and E, uh, during the staining of H and E, hematoxin and eucin, some organic solvents are used. And these solvents, it will solve the fat, will dissolve the lipids. So after finishing the staining with H and E, when we examine the slide, the cytoplasm will be appearing like an empty space. There is no fat present because it is dissolved during the preparation of section, during the staining of section, leaving an empty space like that. So the cell or the cytoplasm of a cell appear like empty area. It is not empty. It was containing fat, but this fat dissolved during the preparation of the section, preparation of the slide, leaving a cavity or a space like that. In order to see the fat itself, in order to stain the fat and not being dissolved during staining, you will use special stains. Oh, sorry. Here in this point, a, when this cell is seen under the light microscope like that, it is described by the word signet ring, like a ring with a certain signet at, the, at one side. So this cell, similar to the appearance of signet ring, so it is described by the word signet ring appears. So fat cell by H and E appears signet ring, the nucleus at the side, cytoplasm is empty, like signet, and this, uh, this criteria or this description is characteristic for fat cell by H and E. Signet ring appears. Again, by special stains used for staining the lipids, and they stain the lipid and not solving it, we will use special stain like Sudan 3. This is a special stain for lipid, stain it orange. So by Sudan 3, the lipids appear orange colored. Also, we have another special stain called Sudan Black. This Sudan Black, from its name, it will stain the fat black. These are two special stains for the lipid or for fat, stain it orange by Sudan 3 or black by Sudan black. Regarding the function of adipose cell or fat cell, fat cell from its name, it is a storage site for fat. So this cell is considered storage for extra energy or extra fat present in the body. And at the same time, their presence uh, provide the body with heat insulation. It insulates the body temperature inside and preventing heat loss. This is what we call heat insulation. So again, the function of fat cell is, is a storage of extra energy or extra fat present in the body. And at the same time, it helps in uh, heat insulation, protecting the body and decreasing the heat loss. This is the adipose cell. So here we mentioned the three types or main types of fixed group, undifferentiated mesenchymal cell, fibroplast, and adipose cell. Let's shift to the second group, free connective tissue cells. This free group includes mast cell, plasma cell, and macrophage. And also we have additional two types, pigment cell. From its name, pigment means that this cell contains a pigment. And white blood cells, the blood cells that could be seen sometimes in the connective tissue, but also you will not mention them in details. We just know that these two types are considered free connective tissue cells. But we will mention in details mast cell, plasma cell, and macrophage. Regarding the mast cell, mast cell is oval cell. So this is the shape. The cell is oval and it has 
very few processes projecting from its surface. So we cannot call it branched because the processes are short and very few. So it is oval in shape. Nucleus is rounded and central in position. This is the nucleus. It is rounded and central in position. This is a diagram for the mass cell. Regarding the cytoplasm, cytoplasm here contain granules. So it is not evenly distributed color, but here we have granules. These granules are large in size and the blue color, basophilic by H and E. So here the basophilia is not even in the cytoplasm as a whole, but here the basophilia is restricted to presence of basophilic large granules. Here is the granules, which are blue colored in the cytoplasm. Regarding the function of this cell, cell mass cell is responsible for secretion of histamine and heparin. Histamine is the, the substance for allergy. It is responsible for allergic reaction that occur in some persons when they are exposed to certain materials like dust, like pollens, many substances or certain drugs, for example. These are drugs or these are sorry substances from which some persons having an allergy to this substance. This allergy is mostly mediated by secretion of histamine from mast cell. In addition, it secretes also heparin, and heparin, as you know, is an anticoagulant. It prevents blood clotting. This is the function of histamine and heparin. So this cell is responsible for production or secretion of histamine and heparin. Next cell is the plasma cell. Plasma cell is the cell. Uh, Connective tissue cell formed by activation of B lymphocyte. B lymphocyte is one of the white blood cells. So B lymphocyte is one of the, the white blood cells when it is activated by exposure to certain allergen or foreign body or bacteria. This B lymphocyte is activated or, and converted to plasma cell. And these plasma cells are present in the lymphatic organs and they migrate from lymphatic organ to connective tissue. So they are considered the free connective tissue cell. This is a point added to the four or five characters we mentioned about the cell. This is the origin. Origin means what is the cell responsible for production of plasma cell is B lymphocyte. B lymphocyte, when activated, is converted to plasma cell. Regarding the points we mentioned before, the shape of the cell, it is oval cell. So regarding the shape, it is oval in shape. The nucleus is rounded, eccentric, and vesicular. Rounded, eccentric means not in the center. It is shifted to one side. Vesicular means that the nucleus is clear, is not condensed. So here in this diagram, it is not so accurate because the nucleus of the plasma, plasma cell is not dark like that. It is pale stained and it has prominent nucleus. We have diagram or we have photo next. We will see it clear. Cytoplasm of this cell is deep basophil. And deep basophilia will be translated into, it is rich in ribosome, rough endoplasmic reticulum. These are the causes of the basophilia. And in addition, it contains prominent Golgi, all this machinery, protein machinery or protein factory, so this cell is also protein synthesizing cell, similar to which one, which one before we mentioned, uh, we mentioned before, sorry, which was also protein synthesizing cell, huh? which cell it is? Yes, fibroblast. So here, another example of protein synthesizing cell, it is plasma cell. It's responsible for production of certain proteins. What are these proteins? They are antibodies. So plasma cell is responsible for Secretion of antibodies. Antibodies are secreted from plasma cell in response to exposure to certain allergen, exposure to certain foreign body, sorry, exposure to certain antigen, bacteria, whatever the, the, the antigen is, the plasma cells secrete antibody against this antigen. So then antigen will jo join or will join it with the antibody and then it, dis it is destroyed. Here is the function of plasma cell. It is the production of antibodies. Here is the shape of plasma cell by light microscope. All these cells are plasma cells. 
and here is the vesicular nucleus so we can clearly see that the nucleus is pale colored it contains chromatin islands and the prominent nucleolus here is the nucleolus inside we can see it clearly this is the prominent nucleolus and we have nuclear tab inside so this is vesicular nucleus or open face all the details inside could be seen clearly here is the basophilic cytoplasm you can see that the cytoplasm is blue colored and this pale area this pale area represents the area of golgi it is not stained and it appears pale due to lack of ribosomes no ribosomes are attached to golgi so it appears pale area like that so here is the shape of plasma cell by light microscope next cell which is the macrophage macrophage also called histocytes so both are names for macrophage of connective tissue because macrophage could be seen in many tissues for characterization of the macrophage of connective tissue proper we call it histocyte so when you hear histocyte it is macrophage of connective tissue proper because we have macrophages in different body organs and tissues this is a specific name for the connective tissue macrophage regarding the characters of macrophage first of all we will mention its origin also because both macrophage and the plasma cell are not originating from undifferentiated mesenchymal cell so you mentioned their origin but other cells are originating from undifferentiated mesenchymal cell plasma cell is from b lymphocyte macrophage from blood monocyte monocyte is also one of white blood cells we will mention them later when we study the blood inshallah so here the origin of macrophage this cell is originating from another type of cells blood cell called the blood monocyte this is the origin of macrophage in addition to we mentioned the origin of b uh, of plasma cell regarding the characters first one is the shape of cell it is branched cell so this cell have many many processes what we call pseudobodia these are many arms projecting from the body of the cell so it is large and branched cell nucleus of macrophage is a small eccentric also in position and irregular in shape so it is not rounded not oval it is mostly irregular cytoplasm of macrophage is pale basophilic pale here means light colored so it is not containing numerous ribosomes or endoplasmic reticulum as plasma or macro or fibroplasts here the cytoplasm is basophilic but it's pale colored the most prominent organelle present in macrophage for your knowledge is which one which of the organelles we mentioned in the structure of the cell is linked to the function of macrophage macrophage is responsible for phagocytosis it engulf or eat any foreign body and they try to destroy it inside. This function is helped by the presence of numerous lysosomes. Lysosomes are seen or present inside the macrophage and they help it in its function, which is lysis or destruction of any foreign body it meets. It take it inside by these pseudobodia. These are the arms or branches and these are bacteria. So the cell sends its arms to surround the foreign body and take it inside to enter its cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm, it will use the lysosomes to destroy this foreign body. So it helps protection of the body from any foreign material or foreign body try to invade our bodies. This is regarding the macrophage. So here we finish the first big title, components of connective tissue property. We'll shift to the second title, which is types of connective tissue problem. In order not to be misunderstood, simply we can differentiate components from types. If you remember that, for example, if we need to prepare a cake. If I want to prepare a cake, so I need to bring the components that I need to prepare this cake, which is the flour, the milk, the orange juice, for example, the chocolate, and, and so. All these are components. These are components of the cake I will prepare. When I start mixing some of these components, the flour with the milk, with the egg and the chocolate, for example, so at the end I get a chocolate cake. This is one type of cake. 
when I mixing another components, the flour with the orange with the milk and egg, at the end I will get an orange cake. This is our these are types. So the components at first are the components I will use and select some of them to prepare the types. So here we will mention the types of connected tissue property. These types will be formed of the same components I mentioned before, but you will select type of fibers with certain cell or two cells, for example, with the matrix, and we will mix them to get one connected tissue proper type. This is simply difference between the types and the components. Here are the types. Connective tissue proper include loose connected tissue, white fibrous connected tissue, yellow elastic connective tissue, adipose connective tissue, and lastly, reticular connective tissue. These are five types of connective tissue proper. Each one, we will mention its components that are derived from the components we mentioned before. Let's start by the first type, loose connective tissue. This is one of the types of connective tissue proper. This type is characterized by being, or the function of this loose type is it to bind tissues and organs together. So it is, this is simply the function or the general function of connective tissue. The general function of connective tissue in binding organs together is the function of loose connective tissue. So this type is the most numerous and the most widely distributed type in the body. We, we find it in mostly all our organs. This type also carry blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves that help in nutrition of the adjacent tissues. So the presence of loose connective tissue in, a, in an organ provides source of nutrition for this organ, provide oxygen, uh, nutrients, provide lymphatics, drainage, and provide nerve supply for this organ. Regarding structure of loose connective tissue, here is a diagram or a picture for loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue is formed of fibers, cells, and matrix, as the same as I mentioned before. Which type of fibers could be found in loose connective tissue? We can find the collagen, thick, thick fibers, and elastic thin fibers. Both could be found here. So loose connective tissue contains collagen and elastic fibers. This is regarding the fiber. What about the cells? Which type of cells could be found in loose connective tissue? We can find mainly fibroblasts, as we mentioned, it's the most numerous cell, mostly present in all types. Mostly, in, in most, if not all types, fibroblasts is present because it is the cell responsible for production of the fibers. So, cells present in loose connective tissue include fibroblasts together with macrophages and some fat cells. These are present in addition to the fibroblasts, but the main cell present is fibroblasts. Here is the, the, the structure of loose connected tissue. We select part of the components before. We select fibers, collagen and elastic. We select the cells fibroblasts with some macrophages and fat. Together with the matrix will form loose connective tissue. This is the first type of connective tissue proper. The second type is called white fibrous connective tissue. White fibrous. Make you remember which type of fibers, which type of fibers have names similar to white fibers. Huh? It is collagen, yes. So before we mention its characters and components, we can uh, suggest that one of the fibers present or the main, the main fibers the present in white fibers connected tissue is collagen fibers. So it takes the name or uh, part of its name, white collagen, white fibers. Uh, white fibrous connective tissue could be found in, in the tendons, the terminal end of the muscle that attaches a muscle to a bone. This is called the tendon. And this tendon is formed of white fibrous connective tissue. Also could be found in the cornea of the eye, the transparent part of the eye uh, in the anterior part. This transparent area or the cornea is also formed of white fibrous connective tissue. The, so these are two examples for the sites of presence of white fibrous connective tissue in our body. It could be found in the tendons of the muscle or cornea of the eye. Regarding the structure, 
white fibrous connective tissue is formed of collagen bundles. So it's formed of bundles of collagen. And these bundles are formed of group of collagen fibers. It is wavy also, and they are parallel to each other. And in between, we can find which type of cells? Uh, which type? Mostly fibroplasts. Fibroplasts because it's the most numerous cell, and it is the cell responsible for collagen formation. So this cell will form the collagen fibers present here. So again, white fibrous connective tissue is formed of collagen bundles together with fibroplasts. So here is the, the fibers are collagen, and the cells are mainly fibroplast cells. These are the two types or the two components together forming white fibrous connective tissue. Uh, when I want to stain white fibrous connective tissue, I will use the stains mentioned in collagen fibers. It is the same because the main component here is collagen fiber. So it will be stained by the same collagen stains. So by H and E, it will be huh, acidophilic, as you see here, pink colored or red colored. And we can use a special stains like the mallory and the vanges. So the same stains mentioned in collagen, we will repeat here in the white fibrous connective tissue. This is the second type of connective tissue problem. Third one is yellow elastic connective tissue. Again, from its name, which will be the type of fibers predominant here, yellow elastic. So, huh, elastic fibers. It is called yellow elastic connective tissue because the predominant type of fibers present in it is yellow elastic fibers. First, where can I find this type in the body? Sites for yellow elastic connective tissue include the wall of arteries. The arteries are the blood vessel contain oxygenated blood. These arteries or the wall of these arteries is rich in elastic connective tissue. This is the first site for yellow elastic connective tissue. Also, yellow elastic connective tissue could be found in bronchial tree, the wall of trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. This wall also is rich in elastic connective tissue. So here are two examples for the size of presence of elastic connective tissue in the body. Regarding the structure, huh, who can mention, who can help me to mention the structure of yellow elastic connective tissue? It is formed of elastic fibers together with which type of cells? Huh? It will be fibroplast. Yes, because the fibroplast is the cell responsible for elastic fiber formation. Here is the shape of elastic fibers. They are regular elastic fibers. They are singly present, not in bundles. And in between, we can find the nuclei of fibroplast cell, the main cell present in this type. And it is responsible for production of the elastic fiber. So here, yellow elastic connective tissue is elastic fiber together with fibroplast. Regarding the stain, it is the same. As we mentioned in the collagen, we will mention here again, the same stains mentioned in elastic fibers are used to stain elastic connective tissue. Pink colored or acidophilic by H and E, we can use Van Gieson or Verhoeve to specially stain elastic connective tissue. Next type is adipose connective tissue. And from its name, what will be the main component? Adipose connective tissue. So it's mainly formed of adipose cells. So the predominant component here, unlike White fibers and yellow elastic, the predominant here is the cells, the, the adipose cell. While in the yellow elastic and white fibers connective tissue, the predominant component was the fibers. So the, the name of that connective tissue type itself, take the name, take its name from the name of fibers present inside. Here in the adipose, the main component here is fat cell, adipose cell. We have two types of adipose connective tissue, depend on the cell present. We have white adipose and brown adipose. These two types are formed mainly of fat cell adipocyte, but we have some differences between these two types. First is the site. White adipose is present mainly in the adult, and it represents the majority of adipose connective tissue in adults. So mostly, most of connective tissue present in adults, the subcutaneous fat, the fat present under the skin, this fat is mainly white adipose. So where can I find white adipose in the body? It's present mainly in adults. 
and it represents the majority of fat present. Uh, example, the subcutaneous fat or the fat under the skin. Regarding the brown adipose, brown adipose is mainly present in newborn. So it is very little amount in adults and the present in the mediastinum. It is the central part of the chest present where the heart is present. This is called mediastinum. In this area, we can find little amount of brown, but uh, it's mainly present in the newborn infants, the, the babies that are newborn. The fat present in their bodies is mostly brown adipose. So here are the sides, the white in the adult mainly, the brown in the newborn mainly. Regarding the structure, what is the difference between white and brown regarding structure? Both are fat cells. Both are formed of fat cells, but the classic fat cell we describe in adipose cell or adipocyte is here present in white adipose. So it's formed of lower fat cells. Lobules means a group of fat cells together. Each cell is signet ring. It, is, it has single large fat globule pushing the nucleus to one side giving it the cell signet ring appearance. It is the same as I mentioned before, the same criteria of fat cell or adipose cell we mentioned before is here present in white adipose. This is regarding the character of cell of white adipose under light microscope. In addition, we have few capillaries. Less blood capillaries are seen in between the cells in comparison with the brown type. What about the brown adipose? What are the characters of cells present in brown adipose compared with the white type. In the brown adipose, the cells are smaller in size. So the, the size of the cell itself is smaller. It's also formed of lobules or groups of cells, but the cell itself is smaller in size compared with the white type. Here, the cell contain fat, but not in the form of large bowl, large globule, but in the form of small droplets. So the fat here is present in the cytoplasm, but in the form of small fat droplets, small droplets of fat present in numerous in the cytoplasm. Presence of these small droplets will not affect the nucleus. So the nucleus here is central and rounded in shape, not pushed to one side, not flattened, not eccentric. It is central and rounded in shape, surrounded by small numerous fat droplets. This is the difference between the appearance of brown fat cell and the appearance of white fat cell. The, the, the fat here is large globule pushing the nucleus to one side. The fat here is small droplets, numerous in the cytoplasm. The nucleus is present in its center and it's rounded in shape. The capillaries here are more numerous compared with the few capillaries present in the white side. Lastly, the function. <clears throat> Function of white adipose also was mentioned before in the white uh, fat cell. It is the storage of fat and heat insulation. This is the function of white adipose. But here in the brown type, it is not con concerned with the storage. As I mentioned, it's present in newborn. So in the newborn, the function of brown adipose is to produce heat. It is rapid heat production, not storage, not insulation. It is the fat inside the cell is used to, or is oxidized to produce heat, and this help keeping body temperature of newborn when exposure to cold. So in this newborn, the heat regulation centers in the brain is not well developed. So this brown adipose help production of heat, protecting the babies, protect, protecting newborn when exposure to cold, and keeping their body temperature. This is the function of brown. As you Here are two photos for the two types. So who can discriminate, who can differentiate, which one is uh, the brown type and which is the white type and why? Why we can, or how can we differentiate between these two photos? Which one is the brown and which is the, the white and why? Simply, this is the white type. Why? Because the cytoplasm here is clear, empty, the fat globule, the large globule is the solvent and the nucleus is at the side. While here, this is the brown type. Here we can see small vacuoles. The cavities are small cavities. The fat is also the solvent here, but in the form of small droplets, so leaving multiple small cavities. The nucleus is rounded, is rounded, is not flattened, and it is clearly seen in the, inside the cells. 
This is the shape of brown compared with the white adipose. The last type of connective tissue proper is the reticular connective tissue. This type could be found in the stroma of parenchymatous organs. Uh, parenchymatous organs are the organs with no cavity. For example, the liver, the spleen, the kidney, the lymph node, all these organs have no cavity in its center. So its stroma is, or the, the supporting element of these organs is the reticular connective tissue. Regarding the structure, again from its name, reticular, so it contains reticular fibers. So here is the structure of the reticular connective tissue. It's mainly formed of reticular cells. We mentioned it in the fixed group. And reticular fibers, both together forming a network or reticulum. This is the reticulum of reticular connective tissue present in the stroma of parenchymatous organs. And here it's black color, so it's stained with, which is specially stained, stained black like that. It is salversy, yes. This is the shape of reticular connective tissue. And again, the stains are the same as we mentioned in reticular fibers. It is not stained with H and D, but it is stained black with silver and magenta with PS. This is regarding the reticular connective tissue. So here I finish the lecture. I hope that it's clear for all of you and you understand it well. And inshallah, see you later in next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. Assalamu alaikum.